Hey, everybody, it's the Coats. This is Madden Football on EA Sports. Between our visitors and the Denver Broncos. I'll have scores around the league for you at the half, but it's time for a little football. So we'll hand it over to our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Okay, Coach, we are just west of downtown Denver off of I-25 at Empower Field at Mile High. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between our visitors and the Denver Broncos. And hello again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, we look at this Bronco team. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. On the other side of the field for the visiting Raiders, they come in at an early crossroads here facing a tough opponent on the road where a loss would make them 0-3. And when you start that way, doubts really start to creep into a locker room and guys start to battle each other instead of worrying about winning games. Two weeks have come and gone. It's off to week three, and we're underway on EA Sports. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. So here comes the Raider offense now onto the field. They're led out by their quarterback out of Fresno State, Derek Carr. And frankly, this is the type of game that a great quarterback relishes because 0-2, on the road, everything's against him and his team. No one can expect them to win. Sometimes you band together real tight in that situation, and if he plays really well, they've got a chance to get that done. A throw left side to start out, that's complete. He'll be stopped at the 35, but not before he picks up seven yards. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. They fake the handoff. Now Carr. Wide open receiver complete. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos 43. Show a first and ten now in Denver territory at the 43. Working from the gun. It's Carr. And he floated one out there incomplete. Marquise Lee, the intended target, but it'll be second down. Yeah, the offensive starters here for the Raiders. And they come off a tough loss last week, and what's their reward? A second straight road game. Rarely are teams happy about scheduling. They're always calling the league office saying, how come we have this game and that game? But when you're coming off of a loss on the road and you go right into another one, that's a difficult task. Call it about a gain of three, and they'll be looking at a third and seven coming up. Well, look now at our starting defense. This unit, third best in the NFL in stopping the run. Now, if they could just get their pass defense in line, this unit would be really, really strong. And remember the conversation with the defensive coordinator? He wants them to rush the passer better. He wants to see the quarterback on the ground. They've got to create some sacks. And he said it starts early and often. We'll see if they can get to him. Throwing his car on third down. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play, and the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. Well, that opening drive looked good for a moment there, but they'll wind up being turned away thanks to the missed field goal. And those especially hurt when you come into a game on the road. You're trying to get things to go your way early, and now you suffer a setback right out of the gate. 
They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position. And now nothing but green ahead of him. Pass the 20. And all the way home for a Bronco score. Phillip Lindsay, his second touchdown on the season. As his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. So they hit pay dirt on just one play. The long run, the scamper, and a very nice scamper into the end zone for the touchdown. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. This is fielded at the chalk of the 10. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. The Raider offense set to get this drive started. The last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, come get a little bit closer yeah, this time. Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. On third down, Carr. And that is incomplete. And this passing game's whole offense really didn't show up in the loss last week, and it hasn't started all that great here either. Yeah, and it can't let that incompletion become an uh-oh moment. Like, oh boy, here we go again, just like last week. Each game is its own entity, treated as such. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Denver offense now as they get set to take over here. And coming off a one-play drive that was so deflating for the defense, what, what's their mentality? How do they rally here and stop this offense? Well, hopefully there's some determination that sets in because I, they weren't ready to go on the last one. Give all the credit to the offensive guys for getting it done, but to allow a run of that length, that's just not being prepared. So now, are they determined? Are they ready to read their keys and make the proper plays? And we'll see how determined they are and he'll be brought down right at the 30 here a gain of five good enough for the first down so first and ten now from the 30 first rep of the game for Josh Jacobs and he'll have a gain of three to the 33 the last run got three now here's second and seven here's a second and seven and this one complete to Smith. And the Raiders call on a nickel set for third down. He'll look to throw. He's got a man. It's Sutton that's complete. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. His first catch, good for nine and a first down. Two first downs have him up near midfield now on first and ten. They go back to the ground now with Lindsey. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. A 10-yard pickup, and it's enough for a Broncos first down. So here's a first and ten now in Raider territory at the 41. They'll set up a throw. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll make this a second and 13. You know the key to a good screen pass is, don't you? But you're going to tell me, good blocking? Well, good blocking eventually. But first is good acting. You want to let the defenders go past you 
leak out to whichever side or even in the middle where you want to set up the screen, and then you do your blocking. How about the read, though, by the defensive guys? They weren't fooled at all and actually ran with the lineman to where the play was and smothered it for a loss of yardage. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders 18. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Complete. Smith has it. And he gets this inside the 10 to the 9. It's also a gain of 9. Give him nine there on the first down completion. It is hard in zone coverage to stop a curl route because when they see it, they just try and find the open spot and sit down. Yeah, we always talk about finding the soft spot in the zone. What's the key to doing that? How do you do it? You have to read what the coverage is. Is it too deep? Is it three deep? Because then you know where the linebackers are going to drop, what spots on the field they naturally get to, and you find that open space, and then you're in sync with your quarterback. He should be reading the exact same thing, and they put the ball right on you. Down he goes at the 10 with a solid pickup of eight. And the Raiders call on a nickel set here for third down. They'll try and run for it with Lindsey. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. All right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal, you did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays, you don't force any mistakes, you don't take the ball away, maybe that's the way they should look at it. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll run with Freeman here to begin the drive. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. Here's Carr. Gets it off to Freeman. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. It's a gain of six. Hey, check my 47. Check my 47. That's set it. And he'll give it here to his running back. Big Andrew Billings there on the stop. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Here's Carr to throw. Looking sideline incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Shotgun now for Carr. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Second and 10. This one complete to Christian Kirk. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. It'll be a pickup of 16 and a Bronco first down. Partney sold the go route really well. Thought he was going deep and curled it back inside for a nice completion. DBs love when they pump the brakes, don't they? Yeah, that's really that's really a whole lot cool. of fun. It's almost like you said, listen, if you're going to sell the go, just go. Let's see who's faster. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. On second down, a run with Lindsey. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. Out of the gun now on third down. And almost picked off. 
I guess the good news for them now, it's fourth down. They had points on their first two possessions, a touchdown and a field goal, but this time, defense stands strong. Would you say that things maybe are trending now in the right direction for them? Better than drives one and two. There's no doubt about it. Now maybe they can exhale a little bit, gather themselves, and really get back into this game. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Raider drive will start from deep in their own territory with a first and ten. The Raiders offense now, they trot back out. They'll look to get something started. They need to, down 10-0 as they've got it first and 10. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. They had a very short pickup there across the 15 to the 16. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now Carr. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back. Complete. And this will be a pickup of four here. Up to their own 20. 10-0 the score after one on EA Sports. The Raiders on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and four. On play action, it's Carr. He's got the hook up to Lee. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. Downfield, offense. Now those linemen, of course, can't be more than a yard downfield when a pass is thrown, and they might have been able to call that on a couple of guys there. The Raiders on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and nine. Carr going to throw. Looking downfield, and that's caught right side. He's got his man. It's a gain of 20 and picking up the first. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now Carr. And his throw here is incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. Throwing now is Carr. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. This offense line has struggled. In fact, when we sat down with the coach, he said, it's been in tatters lately. They allowed six sacks in their last game. Just gave up another one right there. In tatters, so it sounds a little bit like this right now. Exactly. It's like that paper being ripped. And right now, they've got to find a way to get it back together. Philip Lindsay and the rest of the offense heading back out. And no doubt he's come out of the gate strong only in week three, and you see the numbers thus far. And we always talk about identity, setting a tone, you know, getting, getting the groundwork laid for the season or, or for a game. And that's what they've done with the running game so far. It reminds me of when I first went to the University of Tennessee. And believe it or not, I was a quarterback for a day and a half. <laughs> and the first practice session, the first play we ran was 28 pitch, which is a toss sweep. And I remember the offense coordinator saying, that's our identity, that's our bread and butter, that's the basis of our offense. We gotta get that down right here, right now. I think we're seeing some of that in this running game here. So did you not get that down and that's why you were moved to the defense or what? I, I don't know for that reason, but I do know I saw a couple of guys throw and immediately they were saying, you know, you need to learn how to backpedal. Hey, you turn into a heck of a DB though, partner. The <laughs> pass there complete to Sutton and he is tackled inside the 40 not quite to the 35 solid gain of 18 yards and a Denver first down I think it all came together there in breaking route drove it with excellent pace money throw right there to move the sticks and movement by one of the Broncos up front and in comes the flag and yeah, maybe they were coming with a blitz that time and it caused a jump I think if we saw it 
you know that they saw it. Might have been a little discussion down there. Bad guys come and pick them up, pick them up. And someone jumped. And now a throw here secured by his running back out of the backfield. And he'll go down at the 28. If they didn't have that penalty a moment ago, it'd be a first down. Still a nice 13-yard pickup. Here's Lindsey. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Seven yards there and a first down. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Oh, my goodness. Was that a defensive back that got to him with the pressure? <laughs> oh, look at the former defensive back. You're, you're all smiles up here. I hope everybody can hear my smile on that play. Now pick up of seven there, but they'll still have 12 yards to go on third down. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. He'll drop to throw. This is caught. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Noah Fant, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Broncos push further out in front. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Extra point by Fairbairn, up and good. And yeah, that makes our score 17-0. That time, a nine-play drive. And it culminates in a touchdown by the Broncos. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Raiders offense now, they trot back out. And we don't want to call this desperation time, especially in the second quarter, but you're you down. You don't want to. I know, but oh, let me finish. Okay, my bad. You're down three scores already. You've done nothing offensively, nothing on the scoreboard. That's that's not a good combination. I think you just, you called, it I think you just called it desperation time. I, I think did. you did. But yeah. let's face it, you mentioned this to me in a break earlier in the game. The energy level hasn't been there right from the start. We've noticed that. They've got to find a way to get on their toes and start punching. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Bradley Chubb doing what he does best, getting that sack. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Now Carr. Now they go screen. It's complete. And they'll get him down here at the 23. A short gain there of just four. That'll bring up a fourth down. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. It's taken to the 26. Six-yard return after a punt of 48. And the Broncos take over. First down and 10. On the NFL scoreboard, an update from Los Angeles. It's the Rams that have grabbed the early lead. They'll try and start this drive in the air. I have a feeling that one's going to stay tight throughout. We'll continue to monitor. And now off to the races, down the right side. And all the way home for a Bronco score. Christian Kirk, his second touchdown on the season. And the Broncos push further out in front. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. There aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And the lead is now 24. And they're able to get the connection on the long touchdown pass. And that's one of the easiest drive summaries you'll ever see. One play, touchdown. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Let's go, folks. 
The offense trots back onto the field, and we take an in-depth look at Royce Freeman. They haven't been able to get him on track. They haven't been able to get this offense on track. No points so far. Maybe it's time to start doing a few different things. Throwing the ball. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. Bradley Chubb able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. They'll run it now out of the gun. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating it. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in, your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. So here are the Broncos to take over on offense. They've got the lead right now. You remember last week they defeated the Carolina Panthers here. Good momentum. The drive will commence with a run by Lindsey. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight. Second and two. On second down, it's Lindsey. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. Here's Jacobs on first and ten. Now it looks like we've got a Raider here, slow to get up. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. The previous run, good for nine. Here's second and a yard. Now a carry for Lindsey. And he'll go down at the 28. Seven yards there and a first down. They'll drop to throw. This is the tight end fan. And he'll go down right on the edge of the red zone following a pickup of about seven or eight. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. Second and two. He's got his big tight end, Fant. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Noah Fant with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year, as his guys continue to pour it on. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. On for the PAT, Kaimi Fairbear. And they're able to up the lead by one more. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Carr and the Raiders come up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. To throw, it's Carr. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off near the 34. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Bronco defense has a touchdown. That pick six extending this lead even further. And boy, it's been a while since I've seen a team struggle this badly in the first half. I think all they want to do is get to the locker room, try and regroup, and come out to start the third quarter. But if things don't improve fast then, I think the backups get a lot of play in the second half.
Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Raiders offense, they get set to head back on the field. And they gave up the pick six. And now they'll be looking to right the ship here. Now as a quarterback, are you a little more cautious this go around? You should be, just because after what you gave up. But you can't be so cautious as to just really take things in, and now you're not going to play loose enough to give your team a chance to score. But you still have to be careful, because those defensive guys, I know the reputation defense guys can't catch. All evidence to the contrary on that last possession, though. <laughs> Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Bradley Chubb able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. Charles, not to point fingers, but how much of this goes on the shoulders of the offensive line? Well, look at the six sacks last week. That's the fourth in this game. Definitely the bulk of it does go on the offensive line. That's what they're tasked with doing, keeping their quarterback upright and clean in the pocket. But I think they have to look at, okay, are we bringing in extra people? Is the ball out of the quarterback's hands quick enough? There are a few other factors that they have to look at to try and help out, but you're exactly right. It starts with the O-line. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Give him a first down, 15 yards that time for the Raiders. The Raiders going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They're running it. Again, they'll throw with Carr. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Now, Carr again. Incomplete. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Boy, the numbers throwing the football just not trending in the right direction. Last week he was under 50%. He's under 50% again here. And we haven't gotten an announcement but it appears to me that he might be a little dinged up and is just trying to play through. You know, he's one of those tough guys that wants to answer the bell each and every play for his team. That might be throwing off his accuracy. So they do get the three points before they hit halftime. Something to build on, maybe. Yeah, go ahead and raise the banner, right? But wave the flag. That's good. Got points. And now, as you said, they've got something to build on as they get ready for the second half. Elsewhere, second quarter in D.C. And the Redskins there out to an early lead. And we'll keep you abreast of how that one shakes out. Out comes this field general once more, leading his offense back onto the field. And really a solid group effort. I mean, the montage focuses on him, and rightfully so, but it's been a good job of a team to get this lead. I'm with you totally on that. I love the observation. Offensive line and people having to protect him, they've really been in sync and been on point. How about the guys going out and catching the ball? All the receivers, the running backs, everyone is involved today. And what we're watching right now is really a beautiful team effort, isn't it? Absolutely. A throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. He was trying to find Noah Fant, the tight end. And that'll bring up second down. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. Left side here, that's the tight end Fant. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. They'll throw now on the final play. Looks to throw, fires right side. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. So we've reached halftime here in what is quickly turning into quite a round. As we send you on out to our studios in Orlando, here's Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks. And welcome in, everybody, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Time for a look around the NFL here in week three of the new year.
Lastly, let's check on one final game for you. And you can see they are scoreless as they play the second quarter. Meanwhile, our game has been a boat race. Very one-sided to this point. And for the call of the second half, let's get it back to our commentating team of Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Here comes the Broncos' offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Back to throw now on first down. And the return across midfield and to the 46-yard line. Now it looks like we've got a Raider here, slow to get up. We'll step aside and get a report when we come back to Denver. Now after the INT, it's Carr, completes it to Lee. And he'll be brought down, it looks like right at the 40. Able to get seven on that first down pass play, second and three. Carr, he's gonna find his running back, it's complete. And he's gonna get this down near the 30 yard line. It's a first down on a gain of 10. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here's Freeman. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. From the 27, Carr. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Maybe a frustration penalty there because he's picked them apart. They've tried their best to get to him and haven't done it successfully. A penalty as a result of that hit there. Throwing on first down is Carr. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and you can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he fights his way into the end zone for a Raider touchdown. A great effort there. His first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Raiders are able to cash in for six. Well, we got a little bit of everything on that run. Offensive line creating some space. But how about the guy running behind his pads into the end zone? What does that mean when a guy says running behind his pad? It means that he's going to be a physical runner. That way he's able to use his shoulder pads, his forearms, anything to ward off people to power his way forward. Extra point right down the middle, and that will get him one closer. This is taken just shy of the 10 here. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? 
I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. Airing it out deep for Smith. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Traquan Smith, the intended receiver, and that'll make it third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. A well, man's getting a little loose with the football there, right? Interception before, almost had one here. He's got to start taking better care of it. Yeah, it really should have been back-to-back -back drives with interceptions. He's lucky there. And this one hits at the one, continues on into the end zone for a touchback. Derek Carr and the Raiders set for their next possession. And he has not really been able to have a lot of comfort back there in the pocket. Pressure's been coming at him a lot, hasn't it? And they've got to figure out how to tamp down that pressure. How do they decrease it? Is it getting rid of the football quicker? You know, shorter drops? Maybe they do something different with their pass blocking and their protection schemes. Maybe you meet them on the line of scrimmage instead of retreating to try and protect your quarterback. They've got to figure something out, though, because you cannot let your guy get hit that much. Not if you intend to win. I know they'd like to erase that video and those four sacks that they've seen so far. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get it out near the 40 to the 39. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. And he'll muscle his way up to the 43 for a pickup of right around five. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. From midfield, here's Carr. Blitz coming, and down he goes. Bradley Chubb able to record his fifth sack of the season. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Let's go, let's get this ball back to the offense. Let's go. And now a 10th carry for Freeman. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. It'll be a pickup of 14, but they're still a little bit short as it brings up fourth. Still just the third quarter, but they've got to make something happen. I think they know that. They're going for it on fourth. They'll run it. Freeman. And the surge is going to be too much defensively. He's hit and taken down to the backfield. Royce Freeman is going to be stopped short. And the Broncos will take over on downs. Even though they didn't get it, probably the right call. Too long for a field goal and just not a whole lot to gain from a punt there. Yeah, you wouldn't have really netted very much yardage if you punt the ball, right? And the thing about a field goal, and you know this from so much experience, the longer the field goal, the lower it comes out off the kick, right? Which means it's got a better chance of being blocked. So you're taking a chance either way. I like the fact they went for it. Completes it to Fant on the right side. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. And that's caught by Smith. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. A Bronco first down there, 12 yards on the play. This quarterback now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Back to throw. This is Fant on the short completion. He's brought down at the 34. Call it a gain of four. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Well, this O-line's been great. They've got the big lead, so give them a pass there, I guess. Yeah, I would think so, because if we were grading them on their performance in this game, a lot of pluses in their boxes so far. The pass on second down. 
So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. They'll set up a throw. He's got his tight end fan. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders' 18. One of the advantages of zone defense, as I remember it, is being able to see the play develop in front of you. One of the disadvantages, when they find those levels where they can hit you with it, sometimes behind the corner and in front of the safety, it makes it tough to defend. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Here's second and eight. Firing quickly, but it's incomplete. Just looking at it from a defensive perspective, when you break the huddle in the red zone, tight end is one of the guys you've got a key on because quarterbacks want the ball of their hands fast in this position, and they want to get it to someone. And in this case, he had the play. They just didn't complete it. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. Quarterbacking 101. Never force the ball into double coverage, especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so... Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. Well, one of the few things that's gone right for them, likely a little too late, but maybe a little feather in their cap. I think so, and to me, they played that play without looking at the scoreboard, without worrying about where they were in the score, because things haven't gone right, as you noted, for them much of this game. But they gave great effort there and picked up a defense that's had its share of troubles in this one. So now a chance for points in the opposite direction after the blocked field goal. Shotgun now for Carr. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. Throwing again. Carr. Throws right side, and that's complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Carr now. Perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Working from the gun, it's Carr. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. So second down, still ten yards to go. Ball on the 43. They'll run it now out of the gun. Absolutely nobody fooled there. He's going nowhere fast as he stopped behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. Single receiver, single receiver. Hey, you're on an island over there. Single receiver. Throwing his car on third down. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Sometimes it's just not your day. There's another failure right there on third down. Here's Riley Dixon now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. The Broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Now, this will probably be the last play of the quarter. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we played three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit on half of them, five for ten. They're looking at third and a few inches. On third down, here's Lindsey. Oh, now Lindsey lost the football. Wow, that ball gets knocked free but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. 
almost like it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. A gain of three, second down. Another run by Lindsey. And he takes it past the 45 and down at the 46. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up. Not what you wanted there, third and two. And this is something you've worked on in practice from the time you were in training camp, yet you still create your own mistakes. He'll look to throw, and he's got his man on the out route. He went over 100 yards in the wild card round. He's over 100 here as well, and a first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Counter play with Jacobs. And if there was a lane there, it closed up quickly as he stopped for no gain. Second down. Back to throw now on second and 10. Throw left side complete. That's Jacobs. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They go back to the ground, this time Jacobs. Nothing doing, barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. Hey, four down, four down. Brings up second and nine at the 35-yard line. They'll stay on the ground with Jacobs. He'll pick up only a yard there and it'll leave him with a third and seven. Gotta get to the 26 for a first. This is third down. And this play going to be stopped in its tracks at the 32 and obviously well short of the first down. We've now seen three consecutive one-yard gains and it brings up fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. Car now to throw. Now this will be caught. Tyrell Williams. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Give him a first down, 15 yards that time for the Raiders. On first and 10, here's Carr. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. And the head coach reaches for the red flag, tosses it down on the field. He wants a challenge here. Let's go, baby. Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the player or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident. And then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. And they'll hustle up to stop him well shy of the first, right around the 15. Three yards won't be enough here as that'll bring up fourth down. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. 
Well, that field goal block pretty much sums up the day for them, doesn't it? Boy, it really does. What's the word we often use, symptomatic? It's just, it's just been a sign of how this one's gone. Give a lot of credit to the guys who got in and blocked the kick. They've had the advantage all game, and they continue to press it. And Denver getting set to take the field. Well, this ball game certainly has gotten a little out of hand. This is normally when they say you got to fill. This is fill time for guys like you and I. But you know, to be frank, just a dominating performance. Really impressive what we've seen. It is. And I'm glad that you went in that direction because otherwise we're going to have to talk about the museum tour we took yesterday. Which was also impressive. Which was also very yeah. impressive. But this game, how they've done it, offense, defense, special teams, they've put it all together. And I gotta tell you, I am beyond impressed by what I've seen from this team. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what'll be a third and four. Out of the gun now on third down. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Jacobs. Give him three on the play, and it'll be fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. Fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 15-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the offense will come back out deep in their own territory. On first down, Carr. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Now Carr, after the incomplete pass, brings him up second and ten. To throw again. Carr, and it's incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. From the gun, it's Carr. And that will be incomplete. Well, the trials and tribulations of being a quarterback in this league, it's tough. It's got to be wearing on him out there. Well, he has been sacked a number of times. He had an interception, so I'm going to give him a skosh of credit for hanging in there and trying to make something happen, despite the amount of pressure he's been under this entire game. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Out there to start their next drive, Phillip Lindsay and the Broncos. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What has the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's getting off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging the line of scrimmage, taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps, and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage? Okay. Yeah, in this case, it appears he'll be a few inches short, so nine yards on the gain officially, and it'll be third down. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. Move the chains, a gain of seven on third down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. They're going to go with a tight end here on the running play. And that one covered beautifully. Their defenders stayed home, and they'll stop him behind the line. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time, because let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. On second down, Jacobs. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. On third down, Lindsey. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Let's go, let's it's a first down following a gain of three. I've got an idea. Let's skip racing to the airport at the end of this game. Let's go to the post-game press conference. I have a feeling that the quarterback of this winning team He's going to be giving a whole lot of credit to the running game and the offensive line. Yeah, I was just going to say the offensive line, yes, carrying the ball has been key, but those guys up front, they've made a lot of space. Tackle made by Tyus Bowser. You can't block me. You can't block me. Second and six. 
On second down now, it's Lindsey. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll lead here to a third down. So this one will wind up a Denver victory, and it was a bit of a strange game. They were held scoreless through the entire second half, but their first half output, that's enough to carry them to victory. And that's an odd game to watch, isn't it? Because when we saw the output in the first half, you think to yourself, okay, they've got something working here. They know what they're doing. They'll continue that along. But instead, it's goose eggs in the second half. Fortunately, enough of a cushion and enough defense to carry them home. So for the Broncos, it's back-to-back -back victories now after the week one defeat as they move to two and one. And they'll get to stay home again next week. Meanwhile, for our visitors, the early struggles continue as they'll sink to 0-3. And, and they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week.